When we look at nucleosynthetic anomalies in meteorites, we can distinguish two groups. And this is what is shown on this plot here. So on the x-axis, there's titanium-50, and on the y-axis, there's chromium-54, both in the epsilon notation. So the epsilon notation means deviations of 10 thousandths from a standard. And the epsilon notation typically has no unit. Compared to the delta notation, which is a deviation of a thousandth from a standard, and this has the unit per mil. But epsilon notation doesn't have a, a unit, so this is why there isn't one. So when you look at this plot here, then the Earth is at the, the center at zero, zero. And then we can see the two groups. So one group is up here, and these are the carbonaceous chondrites, or in short, CC. So this is the group of carbonaceous chondrites. And then there's a second group down here, which is called non-carbonaceous chondrites. Now, nucleosynthetic anomalies cannot be explained by mass-dependent um, processes. Typically, nucleosynthetic anomalies are simply explained by admixing a component. So there might be a component with a very different isotope composition very, very far up here. And this component typically is a pre-solar grain, which can have isotopic compositions that are different by orders of magnitude from the solar composition. So it's really very, very, very high up here somewhere. And then the mixing line would go something like this. So this is the mixing line of the pre-solar component with our solar system. And all the components in our solar system fall on this mixing line depending on whom, how much of uh, the pre-solar component they receive. So then we can use this plot here to make some, um, develop some possible models of the early solar system. Uh, I just want to indicate, outline one of these. The, the main aspect of this plot is that nucleosynthetic anomalies allow to classify the meteorites into different groups um, of, of different nucleosynthetic or different isotope compositions depending on the nucleosynthetic, their nucleosynthetic anomalies. Now what can be done, for example, is if the sun is in the center here and then there's a protoplanetary disk surrounding the sun, then this early protoplanetary disk might receive some pre-solar grains. For example, there's pre-solar grains coming in here. However, the pre-solar grains are only in the outer part of this protoplanetary disk, but not in the inner part. And the reason for this might be that there is the orbit of Jupiter preventing, due to gravitational, uh, gravitational barrier, basically, preventing that the pre-solar material mixes into the inner part of the protoplanetary disk. And then, in this case, this would mean that basically the, the carbonaceous chondrites receiving some of these pre-solar grains form in the outer part of this protoplanetary disk, while the non-carbonaceous chondrites form in the inner part of the protoplanetary disk. And this is one of the possibilities to explain this kind of dichotomy or different composition, um, isotope composition of these two groups of meteorite that we can identify in this plot depending on the isotope anomalies.